What's going on, y'all? It's your boy IWL from OTG Beat Tutorials and DrumForDrum.com. I want to start showing you guys how to use different programs to make your beats with. Um, one of my favorites we're going to start with is Appleton Live. So let's go. I'm going to show you the basics, just how to get started first. All right, right here what you have is Appleton Live 8. Um, I have Appleton Live Suite. It has everything that comes along with it all the instruments, the media effects, and all that. So first, if you just open it up, you can use different different sound cards. Hopefully you have an interface. Right now I'm on my laptop, so I'm using my Fast Track Pro. And the way you would set that up is by going to Options, go down to Preferences, then go to Audio, and right here you would select what you want to use. ASIO for all is if you don't have an a interface and you just want to use your laptop, um, then I recommend using ASIO drivers just because they're a little bit faster. I can set my buffer size. That's what gives you um, the latency between when you push the key and when you hear the sound. Um, the good thing about Ableton Live is it has a good latency driver error compensa compensation this right here this will let you fix it so you don't have that problem if you're on a slower system um, basically you go to input and you can choose your inputs I only use my first two inputs and outputs because I'm using my other outputs for something different and basically that's it you go to your MIDI screen this will be uh, where if you're using a launch pad or Axiom or something that goes with some kind of MIDI controller, this is where you save, where you would save all your stuff. If you have a sample, I use SoundForge, so this opens my SoundForge. This is your folder if you decide to record in Ableton Live. If you have Max for Live, this is where that would be. This is what will save your minimum space. So if you have, if you're using your computer to save everything, you want to have, uh, you want to leave this amount of free space on your computer. I just use this by default. Um, this is where your plug-in folders would be, and your auto rescan is so every time you start Ableton Live, it'll open up and it'll rescan to see if you've added any new VSTs. Right here, this will tell you how you record. You can record in WAVE or AIFF. That's the Apple format. Your bit depth, 16, 24, 32. Here's your count in if you want a pre-count. So um, this is how you can warp. If you want it to auto-warp, we'll get into warping later. Oh, this whole section, we'll get into this later. This is your quantiz quantization area right here. This covers how you want it to come in, when you want it to quantize, and what's the default quantize. You can set it for one bar or global. I leave it at global because I can change it right here. Um, select on launch is when you press the play button right here in your scenes. If we had a scene here, that would be when it starts. Select on next scene launch, that's the same deal. Um, CPU, if you have multi-core process, if you have a multi-processor system, say it's got two processors in it, that you can use just one or you can use both. This is your license area, and here's your library to show everything that you have unlocked unlock with live. And this is where you can change the look and the feel. So you could change, you know, I like to change the way my background looks for wherever I'm at. You know, I could be in the room in the dark. I could use just my computer, and if I'm using it in the dark and I'm not just laying in bed using it to make beats, then I may change the way it looks. Or if I go someplace and it's real bright, I may change to dark gray. I tend to like the dark gray color personally, but... Hey, to each their own. And basically, that's the run-in, uh, the basics of 
the preferences screen of Ableton Live. 